starting to hit that mid-year point now where we reflect on the year that we've had so far in music. We're looking at the year of 2023 so far. Tell me what you think it's been like so far in the comments, of course. I'd love to hear what people think because I'm seeing a lot of mixed opinions on this so far. But to kick off this little mini era of talking about the year so far, as I keep saying so far, so far, so far, we're going to look at my most played music of the year so far, so far, so far, so far. So... As I like to do, I'll pull up my last FM here. I've got it over here. I'm going to have a screen recorder so you get to see what is here and you get to look at my most played music of the year. I do feel like last FM is the most accurate tool when it comes to stuff like this because whenever I've used other things, even like the Apple Music Replay stuff, it, the numbers are just never accurate ever at all. So this is the first video in this little series that we're going to have here. Of course, there's going to be the best albums and the best songs too. I'm hoping to have it cycle over the next three Sundays. So this Sunday is this one, obviously. Then the next Sunday is going to be albums and the Sunday after being songs. We shall see if that comes into play. It might be a bit of a tricky thing to pull off. Uh, as you know, my songs lists end up being quite an event. So, you know, I need all the people to come together for that one for it to work. And yeah, we shall see how I can pull this off. Hopefully I managed to do it, but yeah, we're going to start with my most played stuff of the year so far. So thinking about this more, I think it'd actually be pretty fun to scroll from bottom to top. Starting with my artists here, as you can see on screen, uh, from 50 to 1. I, I didn't do that initially. I started recording and I deleted what I put because I was like, actually, that's a fun way to do it. You get to see what reveals as being the number one. I like that. Anyway, some pretty cool artists so far. Uh, McKinley Dixon making it in there with his album, fantastic. Steve Lacey there be, being there is pretty funny because that's probably just like Bad Habit and Dark Red because I do love those two songs. But yeah, the fact that it's on the same level as, you know, Jason Isbell and McKinley Dixon who have both dropped albums this year is pretty funny, really. Uh, but as the year goes on, they will, they will shoot up. Uh, Foo Fighters dropped an album too, went back to their greatest hits as well. Uh, really enjoy that one. Um, De La Soul, of course, their music got finally put on streaming, gave them a few out of their albums, a few listens. Uh, we got that Child album, Adrian Lenka, who I often just go back to, a very comforting artist to play often. Uh, Travis Scott, I did mention as well, being, um, uh, you know, Astro World growing on me. Uh, I'd, I'm not going to mention every single artist here. I think I'd be boring you to death if I did that. Uh, Bruno Mars. Anson Pack Silk Sonic. That's just the mainstay on all my on all my listen to lists uh, since like 2021. Just love love that album so much, man. Uh, what else we got here? Come on, man. We got Shame. Saw them live, so played them quite a bit and had a good time with their new album. I've been playing Catronada a lot too. Just been going back to 99.9% so much recently. I mean, I say so much. I feel like some of these numbers are pretty amateur. Uh, for, compared to most people's lists like whenever I look at people's most played and stuff like they rinse their favorite eyes so the numbers are just crazy whereas when you look at mine they're pretty low and I think that's probably due to the fact that I don't go back to things constantly because there's just so much music out there man the breadth is insane so many artists I absolutely love it would be hard to just constantly play just the one uh, so for me you know 54 plays in six months it is a lot. I'm basing it on my own standards here. Uh, Minnie Ripperton is here too. Adore her music. Have, have had a great time uh, with what she's delivered over the years. Might do a video on her one day too. Just an entire, maybe a worst to best or something a bit different. Maybe a top 10 songs. I don't know. Just to celebrate her music because she's incredible. One of the best artists of all time for me. One of the best singers of all time as well, man. We've got Kate Bush in there again, kind of a mainstay, just love going back to her music, have a lot of uh, attachment to her. Vale Smith, my guy. Vale Smith, he dropped a really good album this year. Been back to his other stuff too. Frank Ocean, another mainstay. You know, we never really get anything from Frank nowadays, but going back to Channel Orange and Nostalgia Ultra, I just such lovable albums for me. And of course, Blonde is really good as well. So yeah, Khalil Blue. Khalil Blue is super underrated. I'm going to mention that right now. Kalil Blue. Please listen to Kalil Blue. Uh, super underrated artist. Really, really good album um, that has come out this year as well. I haven't talked about it in a full video yet, but I might do. We shall see. But yeah, super underrated, fun, 
bouncy pop rap trap artist as well like he's not the the, the usual kind of like you know uh a trap artist in the sense that like you know he's not like a lucky he's not like a playboy car he's not that kind of trap but there are trap sensibilities coming through in his music and yeah he has a real good way of honing on in on those sounds really well uh, paramore drops an album of course anderson pack another mainstay he hasn't dropped anything but i just love going back to his music maybe he will drop something this year though there's there's a good chance that he will uh, young fathers their album really grew on me so i've been playing them quite a bit kendrick lamar again a mainstay Beyonce's Renaissance still in rotation, so she's pretty high up here. We are getting pretty high now, though. We're in the top 20. Aries, honestly, most of those plays might be Snake Eyes, seriously. Like, I absolutely love that song. Snake Eyes is one of my favorite tracks of the year so far. Please check it out if you haven't already. I think it's one of his best songs so far, actually, which is a crazy achievement for an artist who dropped the album that he did the, you know, a few years back, which is an, an excellent pop album. Been enjoying some Caliuchis. Uh, went back to her first album, which is still her best for me. So good. And uh, yeah, really enjoying um, what she's been doing with her album this year, which was pretty good too. Shaka Khan. We're getting into the big boys and girls now. Shaka Khan, been really, really big on her music. Checked out a few of her albums. What's she going to do for me? One of my favorite albums ever now. So glad I checked that out this year. That's a fantastic listen for 2023. Love that shit. Uh, Tori Amos been trying to get through her discography really slowly but the music I've heard from Tori so far even though I've not heard like probably like 60% of her albums because she's got that many I don't know what I'm up to I'm, I might be up to like seven or eight or something it may be even less than 60% actually she's got loads of albums uh, more than 60% I mean but yeah what I've heard so far is fantastic like the run in that night in the 90s is stellar that run is one of the best 90s runs for real. Like from that debut up until like Choir Girl. Oh my God. What a run. What a run. Um, Jesse Ware, of course, dropped one of the best albums of the year. Did that top 10 Gorilla Songs video also. So that's obviously going to be high up. Pretty surprised at how high up Gorillas are though, actually. Um, you know, I think that will probably drop as the year goes on quite drastically. By the end of the year, I can't see them being in my top 20. I don't go back to them that often, you know. G uh, Future, maybe another one that might drop too. Um, I love Future's music, but again, don't really consistently go back to it like I do some of these other artists that are in the top 20. And now we're entering the top 10, just about. Uh, Talking Heads obviously did their worst to best. And Breakance, who gave me my album of the year last year, is just kind of carrying over to this year too. Uh, but yeah, top 10, Injury Reserve did a top 10 on them, so of course they're pretty high up. James Ivey as well, EP of the year so far. I even talked about in a recent tweet where I said it's actually my most played EP of all time, which is crazy to have that already. Uh, Caroline Polachek dropped an album, of course, loving that. Je Janelle Monet loving her old music and really did enjoy her most recent one, even if it wasn't anywhere near her best. But I've been going back to her quite a bit. Kylie Minogue, top 10 songs, of course. But she's super replayable. Joni Mitchell, no actual video on Joni, but I could do a video on her at some point because I've heard every single one of her albums now. And that was my goal for this year, which is why she's in my top five of 2023. There's no uh, plans for a video, but I think she's definitely due one at some point from me. Stevie Wonder, top five, just for the fact that I love him. Michael Jackson did a top 10 songs on him, but again, being really getting into his music now. The Beatles at number two and then Tyler Creator at number one. So there we go. Tyler Creator dropping that deluxe edition this year, but also did a video on him. Just really, really grew to love Call Me If You Get Lost, as well as the deluxe tracks too. That whole run is excellent. One of the best projects of the 2020 so far. I didn't realize it when it first came out because I only gave it a seven, but honestly, so, so good. And the Beatles, I just guess I fell in love with Abbey Road this year. Like I always liked Abbey Road, but I went back to it. I was like, man, I've been sleeping. This is actually an amazing album, which is no hot take. You have all heard people call Abbey Road an amazing album before but just kind of came to realize how good it is. I just realized how long that went on for, but let's uh, go a bit quicker this time with my albums. So An Evening with Silk Sonic, we got This Is Why, which I did like, but not an album I'm absolutely loving. Um, we got Maps in there by Billy Woods, Simbi, Lil Sims, 
Igor went back to that, of course, for the video. I mentioned Kaliuchis already. Kinoteki not in there, but that album's fantastic. And Black Country New Road weren't in my artists for this year either, I don't think, but love that album. One of the best of the year. Maybe it's one that I just need to like sit down and like simmer, you know what I mean? Rather than it being one that I'm just going back to regularly, you know what I mean? Fireboys in there, of course. Malibu, uh, the Beatles' White album, of course, is made it in there too. So Yola Stand for myself. Kind of fell back in love with that this year. Gone back to that quite a lot. Love it anyway. But yeah, Paranol. Don't think I saw them in my artist so far this year. But again, love that Paranol album. Oh my god, the Subtract album. What a letdown that was. Man, that was a huge letdown. There we go, Khalil Blue's in here. Love that uh, new one from him. I mean, I don't know if I absolutely love it. I don't know if it'll get a full review, but I'm really liking it is the way I should have worded that, actually. Uh, yeah, a lot of just 2023 releases here coming up now. Ones that I've already reviewed, like Nico Polo, Vale Smith. Uh, but the Electric Lady's pretty interesting there, making its way back in. Really found a, a new love for that album this year. Floss by Andrew Reserve, that's pretty much in all of my... Uh, year-end list to be honest in terms of plays uh, off the wall michael jackson what are you going to do for me shaka khan just bangers on bangers on bangers man. believe in me who believes in you aries still feel like it's an underrated album actually one of my favorites of 2021 let's start here by little yacht he's there too uh heavy heavy young fathers the estate sale is in the top 10. And then when you scroll up in a minute, you will see that, call me if you get lost, the original album is somehow also there too. Um, yeah, the Kamal album though. Love that, really love that. That's in my top 10 right now. Songs in the Key of Life. Hypochondriac Breakance, Renaissance, just super, super replayable. The That Feels Good album, again, super replayable for me. I already mentioned Abbey Road, that is at number four. Everything Perfect by James Ivey, one of my most beloved recent discoveries, Mr. James Ivey, love this guy. Call Me If You Get Lost is number one, and Desire I Want to Turn Into You is number two. So there you go, that is my albums for this year. Um, I don't know what else to say on that. Let's just do the songs now. Okay, now the final part I want to mention here, songs, most played songs of the year so far. Not particularly high numbers, but in terms of what I tend to go back to a lot, you will see that, you know, it, it, it's just how I play music. But some pretty familiar faces here. The Cure in here is pretty cool, actually. Um, here Comes the Sun is there too. Yeah, some pretty um, newer releases kind of popping up here, as well as like a mixture of old releases, I guess. Um, I don't know if that's particularly interesting commentary, but there's some odd ones popping up, like Redbone by Charles Gambino. Like, I love that song, but it, it surprises me that I've gone back to it that much that it's in my top 50. Same with Temptation by Joey Badass. Um, yeah, it's just a track that I really do love. But it surprises me that it manages to make it in a video like this. You know what I mean? Like it's, you know, it's not something you'd expect to see. But obviously there's some pretty clearly, you know, obvious ones popping up here. Oh no, I skipped like half the list there. Hang on. You know what? Actually, there aren't that many obvious ones. I'm, I'm looking at this list. I'm thinking, man, never too much. Luther Van Dross. We can work it out. Shaka Khan. Like... Yeah, you wouldn't look at a 2023 list and think this was normal, I guess, actually. Um, but Top Dog is a track from this year, which really has grown on me. Exo Tour Life and Lucid Dreams are pretty high up. Just two tracks, that I don't know what it is about them. But this year in particular, I've just had a, a huge craving for. Uh, I don't know what it is about those two tracks, really. Jamiroquai, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Jocelyn Brown, yeah. Yeah. Nina Cherry, yeah. You're getting into the, the brain of your boy Not Real Music right here. These are the jams of a lifetime. These are the jams of a lifetime. Anytime you ever with me in person and you want to play some music, stick on Jocelyn Brown, somebody else's guy, and Nina Cherry's Buffalo Stance, and you will make me the happiest man of all time. Because I they are two all-timers right there. All-timers. Corso. Tyler, a lot of Tyler on this list. Uh, like I say, just had a newfound love for him this year. Catch Me Outside by Ski Master Slump got it at number eight. 
I feel like that's become a bit of an underrated song, to be honest with you, man. I absolutely love that shit. Pearls by Jesse Ware. Snake Eyes, already mentioned, being one of my favourite tracks of the year. Rock With You, somehow here, but just I love that song. Play it all the time. Cuff It by Beyonce. Bad Habit by Steve Lacey is still in there. But it's being surpassed now by Under Tongues by James Ivey. And my number one song of the year, which you didn't even need me to look at. I knew it was going to be this. Fam Jam 4000 by Jordan Ward. That is a sleeper hit of the year for me. I feel like it's become just a constant rotation for me. Just a track that I absolutely love. I feel like it's so fun, so replayable, so exciting. And yet it's so low-key as well. I feel like the vocals he brings to the table are really charismatic, but the instrumental just kind of creeps up on you. Like when I first heard this song, I knew I liked it, but my God, after so many listens, this song so grows on you like crazy. And Under Tongs as well by James Ivey is excellent. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that top 10 actually. I think it's a pretty cool, nice little diverse list of songs from all kinds of styles of music. Kind of captures a lot of what I like just in that 10 there right there. There's hip hop, there's pop there's classic stuff there's just really youthful and spirited stuff not that i'm youthful really but you get what i'm trying to say so yeah let's see some of the like raw numbers because i'm kind of interested i didn't look at this before but 9323 songs scrubbled so far this year is that a lot probably is a lot but i don't know if it is a lot but it feels a lot 2179 albums scrubbled this year a what? Again, that's got to be a lot, right? That doesn't make sense. Um, I haven't listened to that many albums this year. I think sometimes if Last FM counts something as something else or whatever, it might just, yeah, it might just be an, a separate album. I don't know. And then 1,805 artists scrabbled this year. These have got to be like virgin numbers, right? I don't know, man. I'm starting to think, yeah, yeah. You guys probably will be having your own thoughts about this. But in terms of what I've played... The most this year. April is my highest scrubbled month with 2,821 scrubbles. Oh my God. You know what, man? Just a bit of a deep dive into my personal life. This year, I actually got pretty much where exactly where I wanted to be finally in my career because uh, I'm a teacher, but it took me a while to actually get into a teaching role in a school. I was doing like supply teaching, you know, substitute teaching, that kind of stuff. Really didn't like it, to be honest with you. But it, it, it got me where I wanted to be in the end. And I started a new school January. So this year was like a total new chapter. As soon as January 3rd hit, I was in a new job and everything like that. And I was sat there thinking, man, everything about my music habits and all the stuff I want to listen to, it's just going to fall off and I'm not going to have the time to do it anymore. But it really hasn't come to life at all. I've listened to a lot of music this year. I've still had time to see a lot of family and friends. Like I've managed to balance out a nice array of work and life and music loving all together in one year so far. I'm pretty impressed with these numbers and I'm quite happy that I've managed to do that this year, to be honest with you, because I didn't think that was going to happen. Okay, we're going to end it there. I don't know if this was an interesting video for you. I don't know if it was worthwhile. I feel like after recording it, I don't even know if it was any, if there was any point to it. I hope you're watching it and thinking there was and you've enjoyed seeing my tracks and seeing what my most played stuff of the year is. And most importantly, if you picked out any interesting recommendations, that would be amazing too. That is always one of the things I love to do with my videos. So please tell me what you think in the comments. Tell me your most played tracks of the year, your most albums of the year. You can screenshot it and send it to my Twitter if you want. I wouldn't mind that at all. Click the link in the description. You can follow me over on there and show me what your most played music of the year so far is. Check out my Patreon as well. Keep an eye out for more mid-year lists. We're going to do albums. We're going to do songs. You know how it is. So stick around. You will be getting those in due course. Thank you. Subscribe if you haven't already. Goodbye.